Welcome to this episode of Creo Parametric for SolidWorks users. In this episode, we're going to take a look at assemblies. I'm going to recreate this assembly that has six unique components. And some of the things that I'll show you are how to start off a brand new assembly, how to assemble with constraints, how to assemble with mechanism connections, repeating, creating a new subassembly from existing components, and also temporary interfaces. So let's jump into it. To create a brand new assembly, you will go to the new icon, which is right here. Also, you can use the keyboard shortcut of Control N. In the dialog box, we're going to change our type to assembly. Be aware that there are a number of different subtypes of assemblies in Creo Parametric, but we're going to use the default design subtype. And another difference between Creo Parametric and SolidWorks is that in SolidWorks, you really give the name to a component when you save it. In Creo Parametric, you do it right up at the beginning. And this is going to be my roller support assembly. You also have a space for the common name because a lot of times you use a numbering system for the name of the component and then you use real common words for the description of it. Here we also have the option to choose a default template. If I uncheck this option and then click OK, I'm going to get a dialog box with a variety of different default templates. So for example, I might have some templates that are made in the metric system, others which are in English units. I might have some for special purposes, like if I'm working in aerospace, but I will use the one that I have selected. Let's click the OK button. And now my assembly is started. I'm going to turn on the display of some of my datums to show you that when you start off with a default template, often you get some default datum planes and a default coordinate system, plus a bunch of other things that are set up for you. Now I'm going to bring in my very first component. To do that, you use the assemble icon. That is the keyboard shortcut of the letter A. And in my folder, I'm going to start off by selecting this part. Let's click the open button. And another difference between Creo Parametric and SolidWorks is that in SolidWorks, you often start off a brand new assembly by selecting a part and you choose make assembly from part. There's no real equivalent command for that in Creo Parametric. But when you create a new assembly from a part, it is automatically fixed at the origin in SOLIDWORKS. That is not the case with Creo Parametric. Usually when you start off a brand new assembly and put in your first component, you're going to use something called the default constraint, which is going to align the origin of the component with the origin of your assembly. Now, I find that a lot of people coming over from SOLIDWORKS don't do this. They will not use constraints for the very first component. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to show what happens if you don't assemble the first component. I'm just going to hit the check mark out of the dashboard to unclutter the screen. Let me turn off the display of the datums. And so now I have my first component in here. If you take a look, though, in the model tree, there is a little empty box next to the name of the component. That indicates that it is under constrained. And generally, you don't want that. You want your first component and all static components to be fully constrained. But let's say that I make the mistake of not adding constraints to the first component. Let's continue on and assemble the next component. I will click on the assemble icon. And now I'm going to bring in the bracket component. And you see that we have this 3D dragger that is red and blue and green. This allows you to start positioning the component when you're adding your different constraints. So you can translate and rotate along here, a lot like the move component option that you have. And so for assembling this component, well, I like to use geometry. Let me use the center of this hole. That's going to line up with this hole here. And this automatically gave me a coincident constraint. Now let me select, say, this hole and this hole there. 
This time I actually got something called the oriented constraint. So a lot of times when you are using two sets of cylindrical surfaces, you will end up getting an oriented constraint for the second one. That helps if you have any minor misalignment between the centers of the two sets of holes and allows you to continue on. And then for my last constraint, let me select this flat planar surface and I will have it go right up against this flat planar surface. And now the component has changed color. It went from the purple preview color to this orange color that indicates that the component is fully constrained. So now when I hit the check mark, if you take a look in the model tree, now the second component has a little empty box on top of another box. This is the indication that the component is assembled to an under constrained component. Well, let's go back to the very first component. When I left click on it, I get a mini toolbar and this is the command for edit definition. This is the command that you're probably going to use most often in Creo Parametric because we spend more time modifying and updating our models as opposed to initial creation. So I will click on this and we can see that again, we have no constraints. It's in the purple color because it is under constrained, but I can right mouse click and hold and choose default constraint. Let me zoom it back into the window and then hit the middle mouse button, which is the same thing as the green check mark. If you now take a look at the two components in the model tree, they no longer have the empty box or the smaller empty box on another empty box because everything is fully constrained. Okay, that's great. Let's bring in our next component. I will choose the assemble icon. This is going to be the pin. And for the pin, once again, I can start moving it closer to where I want to assemble it. And again, I like to pick geometry. I will pick this cylindrical surface and this cylindrical surface. Let me then drag it a little over here so it's easier to pick the next references. Okay, and now because I'm going to select a, another couple sets of cylindrical surfaces, I'm going to use the right mouse button to let Creo Parametric know that I actually want to define a new constraint. So let's pick this hole to line up with this hole. And now with two constraints, I am fully constrained. That's good. Let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. I've got my third component in here. Now I'm going to bring in a bearing that's going to go around that pin. Let me choose the assemble icon. And here is the bearing component. Let me zoom out just to bring it in a little bit closer as I start adding my different constraints in here. So for this one, let me select this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface. And then to eliminate translation, I'm going to have this surface, but up right against this surface here. And right now it gave me a distance constraint. I actually wanted them to be coincident. If you want to change the constraint type, let me go to the drop down list over here. You can see that we have coincident in the list. Alternatively, you can double click on the 3D note in the graphics area. And then from the drop down list, we can choose that we want to be coincident here. And that's one thing I want to mention. The more that you can do in the graphics area using the 3D notes and the right mouse button and many toolbars, hey, that's the better off that you should be. You want to spend most of your time concentrating on the model in the graphics area. Now, one thing in here, if you take a look at the placement tab, there's this option here turned on for allow assumptions. There is a rotational degree of freedom based on how I assembled this component and allow assumptions basically allows you to use any rotation angle for the component in order to fully constrain it. But with this bearing component, I actually want it free to rotate so I can turn off allow assumptions. And that way I'll be partially constrained. But another thing that you can do is use this icon here in order to convert your assembly constraints to a mechanism connection. Right now, this has one rotational degree of freedom. That corresponds to a pin connection 
in Creo Parametric. So everything is good. Let's hit the check mark. And let me get back to a fundamental thing that you'll notice that I'm doing here, which is a huge difference compared to SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, you bring in your different components and then you add mates. And you add mates essentially as assembly level features in the model. You'll notice that we do not have a mates folder in our model tree and we're adding our constraints to locate our component as we're adding the components to the assembly. So that is a big, big, big fundamental difference between Creo Parametric and SOLIDWORKS. And in SOLIDWORKS, you're sort of solving all the different mates simultaneously, but in Creo Parametric, it's much more an order-based system. Okay, let's bring in our next unique component. I will click on the assemble icon once more. I'm gonna grab the wheel. And this time, instead of adding constraints and then converting it to a mechanism connection, you can use this drop-down list to go right to your mechanism connection. The wheel should have one rotational degree of freedom, so I'll choose the pin connection. Let's pick this cylindrical surface and then this cylindrical surface. It still has translation, and to eliminate translation, I'll pick this flat surface and this flat surface over here. That's good. Our connection definition is complete. Once again, I will use the middle mouse button in order to complete the placement of the component. Okay, let's take a look at another way of getting components in the model. I want another one of the pin and the bearing and the wheel in here. One way that you can get other instances of components in your assembly is by right clicking on the component and using the repeat command. And with the repeat command, that's going to show you all the different constraints that were used to assemble the component. So this is very much like the copy with mates command in SOLIDWORKS. In this case here, I'm gonna select the two constraints that I want to add new references for and then click the add button. And then I'll pick the corresponding cylindrical surface for where the pin is gonna go and then the other hole for this to line up. That's good, let's click the OK button. So that way I quickly got another instance of the pin in the assembly. Let's repeat the same thing for the bearing. I will select it, right mouse click and hold and choose repeat. And here we have the different references. I will once again select both of them and then choose the add button. And let's pick this surface and I'll rotate the model so I can see the flat surface that I want to use over here. And now we have another instance of the bearing in here. And I want to point out that you can use the repeat command with components that have regular constraints and also mechanism connections. All right, let's take a look at another way of getting additional components into the assembly. Let's hit the assemble icon. I'll grab the wheel. And when I go to assemble the wheel, now it's using something called a temporary interface. Creo Parametric remembers how I assembled the component the first time I placed it during my Creo Parametric session and allows me to use that again. It's automatically created this component interface for me to use. If I don't want to use the component interface, I can choose manual instead, but this will save me time and effort. All I have to do is pick this cylindrical surface and then the flat planar surface, and now I've got the component in here. If I hold down the right mouse button, I could choose new location in order to continue placing additional instances of this component using the temporary interface. But I'm not going to do that. Let's hit the middle mouse button in order to complete placement of that. And for the next thing, let's say that I want a bunch of these components to be their own subassembly. So I've got the pin, the bearing, and the wheel. I'm gonna use the shift key to select them. And then I can right mouse click and hold and there is an icon in the pop-up menu, move to new subassembly. I will click on that, and this allows me to create a subassembly in my model, and I'm going to call this my pin wheel 
A-S-S-Y, and then choose the OK button. And here we can choose our default template that we want to use. Let me click the OK button. And now for locating this, for now I'm just going to use the default constraint. I'll show you something in a moment. Let me hit the check mark. And so now I've created a subassembly consisting of these three different components. I'm going to open up this subassembly in its own separate window. So you see the three components here. Now, one thing I want to point out is that this subassembly right now has external references based on the placement of the pin connection. So I can select the pin when I go to edit definition. It warns me, hey, this component is assembled to references inside of the higher level assembly. Let me click the OK button in order to redefine. I'm going to delete these existing constraints. And then as we do for probably 98% of all our components, they're going to use the default constraint for the very first component. And I can hit the check mark. Now we've got everything located correctly in the subassembly. Let me close this. And the wheel subassembly is now in the wrong place. Let me edit definition. Again, I located this using the default constraint. Let me delete that. And instead, I am going to choose cylindrical surface, cylindrical surface. And let's choose a new constraint. Pick that hole and this hole over here. And then hit the check mark. And so that's how I have the pin wheel subassembly correctly constrained now in the higher level assembly. Besides creating a subassembly, you also have something called groups in Creole Parametric, which is the equivalent of a folder inside of SOLIDWORKS. So once again, I will use the shift key to select a bunch of different components. And then I will use this group command. Here we have the local group. If I left click on it, I can call this the pin wheel and hit the enter key. So a couple different ways of doing essentially very similar things. Let me expand this and expand this. So here we have an actual subassembly, but here we have a grouping of components instead. All right, very last component that I am going to bring in here. Let's click on the assemble icon and bring in the friction plate. And once again, I can just start moving things where I want them to be a little bit closer just so that I can start getting the correct constraints in here. Let me select, say, this hole and then this hole and this hole. And let me grab that hole. And then another last thing to mention is that in Creole Parametric, you don't have that uh, what is it called? It's like the mid-plane constraint. I actually forget the name of the mate in SOLIDWORKS, but where you can actually place something so it's centered between other different references. So that's just one thing to be aware of. But let me select for the references. I want to have this surface right up against the back surface. I'm going to tap the right mouse button so I actually pre-highlight the surface behind the front surface and then left click. Once again, we got a distance constraint, but I can double click on the note, change this to coincident, and the component is located in the, the correct place. Let's hit the check mark. And that way I have my assembly created with the six components. So there you see some of the differences between assemblies in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric.